Hello and welcome to another episode of Mobile Thoughts. My name is Chaos Mo, and today we talk about why should you care for Lost Ark and what is Lost Ark. Uh, if you have missed it, uh, yesterday it was announced that Lost Ark is finally coming to the West through Amazon Games. Or, well, even though Amazon is making a big secret, um, it's basically very much confirmed by another South Korean website who um, had an interview with Amazon and Smilegate RPG about Lost Ark. And they were basically naming the game as Lost Ark. So it's out there in the wild. Even though the like the full release and the full like press release of Amazon is still missing, but that is coming in the next few days, I'm pretty sure. Now we don't really want to talk about that. If you want to know what are the ifs, whens, and why Amazon is caring for this particular game, uh, you might want to check out my other video. I will definitely link down below in the uh, description. Now the question is, of course, what is Lost Ark. Well, first of all, Lost Ark is an MMO. Even though it's a top-down action RPG, it is a full-fledged MMO. It's not like you are going into a hub, meeting with a few people and then going into a dungeon. We are talking about a full-fledged MMO with huge open world and thousands of people on one server, but with a top-down view. But that is not the only thing which makes this game special. There are a lot of things which makes this game different. And it's not just the usual World of Warcraft clone or even like EverQuest clone. It is a mix between, between theme park MMO and clearly a sandbox. But... I think we are starting from the beginning. Uh, as you can see, the game was developed in South Korea, then was released in multiple Asian countries and in Russia. And now the Western release is happening next year, but I'm pretty close. We will get some closed betas. Um, pretty sure, not pretty close. I'm pretty sure we will get some closed betas and open betas uh, this year and next year. But why should I care for this game? Like, come on, man. It looks like another free-to-play Asia MMO. Uh, nobody really cares. Well, yes, it might look for you like that, but it's clearly not. I have actually played the game for the last few months on a Russian server, and the game itself starts very standard-esque, but becomes very different, as you can maybe already see in the background. There are a lot of, like in-game cutscenes where you are like, oh, this looks rather interesting. I didn't really expect this. And which brings us to the TLDR of this game. This game is a mix between Sea of Thieves, or somebody took Sea of Thieves and built a complete MMO around it. And I would say we are starting at the beginning. You are creating your character, like in every RPG and MMO out there. And you have multiple classes who then have subclasses. And every class feels a little bit different, which is also one of the reasons why it took so long for the game to actually come out here. Wait, classes are? No, not the classes, but the genders. Because um, in a lot of Asian games... Uh, genders are mostly, or classes are mostly locked behind genders. And it's the same thing with Lost Ark, like the warrior or the berserker or the destroyer. They are all like males. And if you want to play a mage, well, you better play as a female. And there's no way around it. So as you can imagine, a lot of people don't like that really here in the West. And that is one of the reasons why it also took so long, because the gender lock will go away when the game is finally coming to the West and you can choose your gender uh, on the fly. But you're just normally choosing your class and then later on you are uh, choosing your underclass or your subclass. And you are starting off in a tutorial area which is designed for your class only. So every class is starting in their own tutorial area. And then afterwards, you are getting thrown into hmm, broader tutorial area. So at level 10, um, you're done with the normal tutorial area. And then you are ending up in, let's say, in the bigger island, which is still considered a tutorial, though. This is where you learn your class, where you see dungeons, where you have like tons of cinematics, where you learn crafting. Like you're basically getting trained all the standard MMO stuff. 
And you might say, okay, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound really special. No, it really isn't. Like, as I said, this is like another tutorial area, which runs till level 30, 35, which doesn't take that long, really. And that is where the game is opening up. Like the game goes really crazy at level 30, 35, because this is the moment where the game says, okay, we did hold your hand for quite some time. Uh, we are done with that now. Welcome to the open world. Welcome to the MMO part. And this is where you were getting your first ship. Yes, you were getting a boat. And that boat will have its own crew. The crews has special abilities, have their own stats. Your boat has your own stats. You can upgrade the boat. You can buy new boats. You can customize your boats. And then you are sailing around in the world. You can find small islands, secret islands. You can find islands which are underwater for most of the time. And then they appear like in certain days or nights or even just they appear on certain time frames like they are even like boss events on the water or again like world bosses which are only coming out with the hidden islands dungeons and mini games yes we are talking about the mini games in just a few so there's a lot of going on and the game is really rewarding you with sailing around it's not one of these games where they're just like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, here's a boat. Um, you're just sailing from island to island. And it's basically like a glorified taxi system. That is not what they're doing. Like the game is literally like, here's a boat. Have fun. Like see where you end up. See if you can find like new islands with boss fights, quests, dungeons. And the world is basically yours to explore. And you are getting rewarded for it. Uh, one of the main things which are really special in this game and are very important for a lot of MMO players out here are dungeons. How does the dungeons work? Well, the first two dungeons you are getting in the game are very simple to like a lot of MMO dungeons you have seen out there. And they're really for the beginner. Like, this is where the game is like, okay, this is a dungeon, this is what's happening, um, this is what boss fights are, and this is what you can expect from the game a little bit. Nothing crazy. Then, at the third dungeon, the game is like, all right, enough tutorial, let's talk business. And this was actually the first dungeon where my group and I vibed a lot. <laughs> especially the end boss was absolutely crazy and the boss fights are really different they have tons of different mechanics sometimes where you have to utilize the surroundings um the third dungeon is actually um there is not a lot of trash mobs in the dungeon it's just tons of traps like there are traps everywhere like you were getting destroyed by those traps and then the end boss is like oh you used all your health potions you used all your tricks well, let me introduce you to my skill set. And then he's mopping the floor with you. And this is what they are continuing to do with the dungeons. Uh, you can also play, and this is actually really cool, you play the dungeons alone or with a group. And when you are, of course, playing them alone, everything is easier than with a group. And you might say, wait, why should I play with a group then? Loot. The answer is just loot. You are getting so much more loot and better loot with a group that, well, you want to play with a group. If, if you want the loot, you are playing with a group. Simple as that. And so the dungeons are really cool. Very cinematic. Um, by the way, they have tons of cinematics in this game. Very, very anime-esque. Like, they are going full-on anime in their cutscenes. Um... If you're not a fan of like big explosions and big fight cutscenes, you were probably getting a little bit annoyed, but the cutscenes are really cool, especially in the dungeons. Another thing which is very important in the dungeon is actually that they have secrets. I know this is not too important for people who have already played the dungeons. Uh, when you already know where to go, then you will be like, oh, I know where the secrets are. But for new players, this is actually kind of interesting and lucrative because these secrets can give you some good loot. So you actually want to check out the dungeons and not just run through them to the next boss without keeping an eye out for the important parts. Um, there is housing in the game, as you can see it right here in the trailer, where you are building your own little housing area in a sim style, and everyone can have the housing. I'm um, looking at you, Final Fantasy XIV. And it's actually 
Like this game has a lot of stuff to do outside of fighting and outside of just running dungeons. Like as I said, the sailing and the quests you can do on the sailing. Um, like you can do a treasure hunt or a monster hunt or there are certain events you need certain ships for that. Like it's really cool. Uh, there are tons of mini games in the game. Um, there is a card game in the game, a little bit like Gwent, if you want to play that. I know it's not, it doesn't really play like Gwent, but just to give, give you an idea what's in the game. Um, one of the other aspects, besides of the mini games, which are for fun, is crafting. Uh, you can see it right here. Uh, the character tried to do some crafting and then got tricked by his friends um, with some, of cost, some sort of costumes. Um, but crafting is a very important part in the game and is something where you have to make decisions. Like at the beginning, you can learn every crafting and you have every crafting ability, but the more you're doing certain crafting aspects and certain crafting classes, uh, you are getting talent points. And with the talent points, you then have to decide in which talent trees you want to put your points. And you can already imagine where this goes. Exactly. You have more talents than you have points. So you have to decide where you want to specialize in. The same goes, of course, for your class. Um, your class is also getting just talent points. And then you have to decide which abilities you want to make stronger and which abilities you actually want to change. Yes. Um, your talent points for the abilities are not just more damage or more defense or anything. It's really about, hey, this ability was a knockback and now it's a laser beam or something like that. Like you can really, really craze up some of your abilities. And sometimes a weak ability can become an absolutely insane ability later on if you put in enough talent points into that talent. So there is a huge character customization in the game. There are also runes and other magic upgrades for your character in the game. But it takes a little bit till you get there. Like this game has a lot of end game to show for. And that's what the game makes it so interesting. So it's not just like... In the first 20 levels, you will see all what the game has to offer, but there is still stuff coming in the game, even if you reach max level. And to ask a question, yes, there is PvP in the game. Uh, I haven't participated in PvP myself, so I cannot really explain how it exactly works. But as far as I know, there are arenas in the game. Um, there are castle sieges in the game, and there are certain areas in the world where you can do PvP. No, PvP is not active all the time, um, but it is apparently in certain areas, so far as I know. Again, I have never participated in PvP, so I cannot really 100% explain how it works. There are raids in the game, which are also running a little bit um, in the trailer here, you see. And all in all, this game is... If I would put this in the TLDR, they have just a lot and a lot of things from other MMOs. Like every time you have like certain features where you think, hey, you know what? This was actually really cool in this particular MMO, but that was also like the only thing they really had which made the game interesting. And basically, Arkna, uh, Arkna, Lost Ark, sorry, my mistake. Lost Ark was basically looking around and we're taking ideas from every MMO, like every every particular gameplay element which was cherished by a community somewhere in a game was taken and put into this game in some shape or form. Um, not a 100% copy, like as I said, they put their own ideas in there. But it's just, this game is trying to overwhelm you with content. Is everything quality? Mm, there are a few things which definitely need some work and they're definitely working on but it's just at the beginning it's the sheer amount of content they are offering you where you just realize wow this game is super in-depth not in the first 20 30 levels like as i said at the beginning this game feels rather generic but the cool cutscenes and the story keeps you going so you're like yeah man okay i I know gameplay wise, it's still a little bit on the lower end, but at least like the cutscene and the story keeps me going and the fighting feels really smooth. But the thing is, 
when you are reaching the level, you are getting all the features. And that is really cool because unfortunately in a lot of MMOs, what you have is there are a lot of MMO, MMOs out there where you have basically seen the whole game when you reach level 40 out of 80 or something like that, right? And it's like, yeah, not, not a big fan of that when you basically already know what the whole game has to offer and nothing new comes to the game. And Lost Ark doesn't do that. I know this for some people who don't have the time and who are like, they want to see everything very quickly. Um, you have to bring some time with you when you play the game. But I think it's absolutely worth it because this game is massive and it is a lot of fun. And you can just do, and when I say massive, this is the last thing I will say on Lost Ark for now, is even when I mean it is a massive game, that doesn't mean you have to put in hundreds of hours in this game before you see anything. Or you don't have to be a hardcore gamer to play this game. Um, even if you are just having like an hour or two per day, you can still do tons of stuff, um, which doesn't need you like four or five, six hours of gameplay every day. Like they, they are not are that crazy. So it's it's a game for hardcore gamers, but it's also a game which is meant for casuals. So you can you can do both. But there are limits, like I will make this very clear. Uh, there are certainly areas in the game where you need a group, where you need people who help you, and where you have to put in the hours. But there's group content and there's hardcore content, but there's also still enough to do for people who don't want to do like group content, who don't want to put in like four or five hours a day, right? And that is completely fine because Lost Ark is actually offering you a lot of things. So I would definitely say look forward to this game. Um, we will definitely cover the game a little bit more here. Um, we will wait for the Western beta and open betas and stuff before we are doing more on the channel with it. I know I could just fire up the console, um, the console and uh, not the console game, the Russian version of the game, and then I could just play it. But that's not really what I want to do because I also want to see what actually changes for the Western version. I think that is very, very important to note. And yeah. We will definitely be back with Lost Ark when there's more and that will be in the foreseeable future. With that said, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more analyzers, more gameplay and just general, in general, more of me, weird, uh, you can do that at twitch.tv slash chaosmall where I am a partner and I'm also streaming from Monday to Friday starting at 8 a.m. ET and we are playing lots of games there and also talking about gaming news. With that said, thank you so much for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next time.